All right. Good afternoon, everybody. I apologize for the technical difficulties. I've now put on a, um, a microphone, so hopefully you guys will be able to hear me a little better. Um, it sounds like the second time was ch choppy. Um, chat is not working right, so we will see if we can't pull this up on my phone and maybe I can monitor chat from there. Um, one second, we get it pulled up here. Um, and I'm trying to pull it up so that way I can see the video. And let me turn it down so there's no. Okay. Looks like I can do this. Um, and. Hopefully you guys will be able to hear me. You guys can put in chat if you can hear me. Um, the chat on my end is not working, so I'm not sure what's going on. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Um, and I apologize for those that have seen this already, but uh, or at least part of it. But we will go through this, and we'll. Uh, I want to share this lesson. I think it's a good lesson this week. So let's start with a word of prayer, and then we can get right into it. Good on, Father. I just thank you for this time. I thank you for the ability to bring these lessons. However, we know sometimes technology doesn't seem to work quite how we expect, but we know that no matter what we face, that you're always near us. And Lord, I just pray that you'll help the technology work this time, help that me be able to be heard, help me to speak my words clearly, um, as well as share the message clearly that you have uh, provided this week. And Lord, I just pray that you will bless each and every one watching. In your name I pray. Amen. All right, well, what I wanted to do, and I've got chat pulled up on my phone, so hopefully um, if you guys put something in chat, at least on Facebook, you'll be able to um, interact with you guys, but for one reason on my laptop, it's not working. That being said, enough of the technical difficulties, technical um, stuff, we are gonna get right into it, and we're gonna have faith that the Lord is going to um, help us. So, we started a new series last week talking about the armor of God. And last week we talked about the helmet of salvation. And as we had a special visit from a, a guest, um, Reverend Long John Silverware, he sent videos for each week. So we're going to um, play that first video. Hopefully that will work. And then we I will come back and we will share what I have to share with you guys. So one second, and I will transition over there. Ahoy, lads and lasses. We're gathered here again to talk about the full armor of God. Last week, we began to armor up with the helmet of salvation that guards our minds. This week, we're going to talk about two more pieces of armor, the breastplate of righteousness and the shield of faith. The Lord needs himself a crew that's going to be faithful and steer the ship straight, no matter how choppy the waters may be. The Lord's book tells us a story about a great man named Father Abraham. The Lord said to Abraham, take off with your family for the land I will show thee. Abraham did just that. He didn't ask for any map or nothing. He did what his captain told him, and Abraham had faith, and that faith makes Abraham a righteous man. Ye old breastplate protects your chest and your heart from harm, and a shield protects your entire body. We pirates don't carry the kind of armor that the knights of yore did, but we do got to protect our eyes. That's why we liken the breastplate of righteousness and the shield of faith to me old eye patch here, because a good pirate knows that you got to protect your eyes. If you want to be in God's crew, you got to wear the right protection. Just as ye eye patch protects you from losing ye eye, the shield of faith protects you from losing faith, and faith protects ye from quitting on your captain. So when some scoundrel tries to tell you things are better on another ship, ye won't be fooled into jumping ship. You know that the Lord died for ye, and ye know that the Lord's ship is the safest on the seven seas. When ye have faith, ye have no trouble sailing to the ends of the earth where there be dragons. Ye know about the dragons, right? Big dragons, sharp pointy teeth. How do you think I lost me eye? But... 
even if you do see dragons, you need not be afraid. The Lord is your captain, and if you have faith, he will sail you through even the darkest of seas. So remember, lads and lasses, put on your breastplate of righteousness and carry your shield of faith, and wherever the Lord may sail you ship, know that he will see you through and protect you. Well, thank you, Reverend Long John Silverware. Um, it shows that my mic is working, so I'm hoping you guys can hear me. Um, if you can, just put a quick note in the chat just saying that you guys can hear me. Um, so that way I know that um, I'm going to go through this entire lesson without you guys hearing what I'm saying. All right. Well, as, Ka as uh, Reverend Long John Silverware shared, we will be talking about the breastplate of righteousness and the shield of faith today. And as we um, are talking over the next several weeks about the armor of God, we learned last week that there has been a, um, a war going on um, in our world. You know? And not physical war, but not like what you would think with our army, but a war, a spiritual war between good and evil. And we talked about that a little bit last week. Um, and in order to be protected for that, we need to wear the full armor of God. But before we get into that, I've got a couple questions for you. For those of you that help out around the house, there's a got a couple questions for you. And we talk about protection. So I'm going to ask a couple questions. I want to find out what you would use for protection for um, these scenarios. So if you guys are helping around the house and you're helping cook and you have hot food in the oven and you need to get it out, what would you wear for protection for that? You would wear an oven mitt. Very good. Next question. Say you're helping dad in the garage and he's cutting wood. When you cut wood, there's a danger of getting sawdust in your eye. What could you use to protect your eyes? Goggles or safety glasses? Correct. All right. Well, here's the third question. Say you're cleaning the bathroom and you're using a chemical that can burn your skin. What would you wear to protect your skin from getting burned? Right, gloves. You would wear some gloves. Well, today's lesson is about protecting ourselves. A shield and a breastplate are both defensive pieces of armor, just like these three items that we just talked about. Our shield is our faith, our belief that God will be there for us to lead us where we need to go. Our breastplate is righteousness. Living a godly life because of our faith uh, is what righteousness is about. And Abraham, who we're going to talk about today, had faith. He trusted God to give him a land for his descendants, even when he had no descendants. Abraham's faith was unshakable, and for that, he was called a righteous man. Well, faith keeps us from giving up on God. Keeps us from giving up on God. It keeps us loyal to God when no one else is. And it helps us to stay the course and avoid the shortcuts to prosperity that would cost us our reputation as believers. So guard yourself with faith so that you, like Abraham, may live a righteous life. So we're going to read a passage, and we're going to go through it. It's found in Genesis chapter 15, and I do have it pulled up on the screen here. So our, I will pull it up on the screen. Um, so we'll go through this. If you'll just follow along on the screen as I read this, we will um, then come back and discuss it as part of the meat of our lesson. All right, so this is found in Genesis chapter 15. Sometime later, the Lord spoke to Abram in a vision and said to him, Do not be afraid, Abram, for I will protect you, and your reward will be great. But Abram replied, O sovereign Lord, what good are all those blessings when I don't even have a son? Since you've given me no children, Eliezer of Damascus, a servant in my household, will inherit all of my wealth. You have given me no descendants of my own, so one of my servants will be my heir. Then the Lord said to him, No, your servant will not be your heir, for you will have a son of your own who will be your heir. Then the Lord took Abram outside and said to him, Look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. And Abram believed the Lord, and the Lord counted him as righteous because of his faith. Then the Lord told him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land as your possession. 
But Abram replied, O sovereign Lord, how can I be sure that I will actually possess it? The Lord told him, Bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. So Abram presented all these to him and killed them. Then he cut each animal down the middle and laid the halves side by side. He did not, however, cut the birds in half. Some vultures swooped down to eat the carcasses, but Abram chased them away. As the sun was going down, Abram fell into a deep sleep, and a terrifying darkness came over him. Then the Lord said to Abram, You can be sure that your descendants will be strangers in a foreign land, where they will be oppressed as slaves for four hundred years. But I will punish the nation that enslaves them, and in the end they will come away with great wealth. As for you, you will die in peace and be buried at a ripe old age. After four generations, your descendants will return here to this land, for the sins of the Amorites do not yet warrant their destruction. After the sun went down and darkness fell, Abraham saw a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch pass between the halves of the carcasses. So the Lord made a covenant with Abram that day and said, I have given this land to your descendants all the way from the border of Egypt to the great Euphrates River. The land now occupied by the Kenites, Kenizzites, Catamanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Raphaites, Amorites, Canaanites, Girgashites, and Jebusites. All right. So that was a lot of verses. But there's a, a lot of good information in that. And it talks about Abram, who we know later was renamed to Abraham, and how he had great faith and follow God where he was leading. Well, last week we learned that there's a war going on all around us, a spiritual war being waged by forces we cannot see. And the victory in this war is already secure, thanks to Jesus. But there are souls at stake every day, and God wants his people to armor themselves to protect themselves from the attacks that come, come even after we are saved. Last week, we talked about the helmet of salvation, keeping our salvation in Christ always on our minds. This week, we're going to add two more pieces of armor, the shield of faith and the breastplate of righteousness. When we accept Jesus as our Savior, we receive the helmet of salvation. But our salvation doesn't mean that we're no longer under attack. Our enemy will come after us, even more to keep us from following God's plan for our lives. And that's why we need to protect ourselves with the shield of faith. Faith is believing in what we cannot see. You guys ever heard that term before? Faith is believing in what we cannot see. Probably heard it in church. I think it's on some movies as well. But it's so true. Faith is a hard thing to hold on to sometimes. Um, especially when you're facing tough times or... Maybe it's something as simple as maybe your parents have told you about a place that they're going to and um, they keep saying, oh, we know that you're going to like it, but you've not seen it, nor do you know what it is. So you're not sure what you're going to like it, but you have to have faith to trust that what your parents are saying are true. Well, it's believing that following God's plan is the best way to live our lives. And when we follow God in faith, we will live a life of righteousness. Righteousness means living according to God's plan, loving God, loving others, and avoiding temptation. And I, there's a Christian song out on the radio right now. Um, it's called Love God, Love People. Um, and I cannot remember the artist off the top of my head, but it's a great song to listen to. So if, you have, if you've heard it, great. If not, it's a good song to listen to. Um, but we're called to love God and love people. In fact, Jesus talks about, in the Bible, when he was approached by the Pharisees on what the greatest commandment was. And do you remember what he said? He said that the first and greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. You guys remember that? We've talked about that numerous times in class. Those are the two things that we, um, we need to do. We need to love God and love people. Well, righteousness means living according to God's plans. And God tells us in Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, 
plans to give you hope in a future. And those are good verses to hold on to. That's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Because sometimes we don't know what's going to happen, but God knows. And we're facing uncertain times in our nation right now, and we don't know what's going to happen, but God does. And he's got it all in control. Well, as we read in today's scripture, faith and righteousness go hand in hand. Abram, whom I said was later named Abraham by God, was a man who lived by faith. God promised Abraham that if he followed God, his children would become a mighty nation. God would also use his family to save the whole world from sin. Abraham had faith, and he followed God everywhere that God had led him. But here's the thing that makes Abraham so incredible. When God made that promise, Abraham had no children. And God's talking to him, saying, I'm going to make your descendants great. But Abraham didn't have any children. And Abraham was older at that point in time, far older than what most people were at the age to have children. And his wife, Sarah, Sarai, who was later named Sarah, was far past the age where women would normally have babies. But God had promised Abraham that they would have a child. And Abraham trusted in God and lived and trusted in and had faith in God that he was going to provide and take care and, and fulfill his promise. Abraham stayed on God's path. And as the author of Genesis said, it was credited to him as righteousness. God gave Abraham a son, Isaac, who gave birth to another son, Jacob, whose 12 sons would then father the 12 tribes of Israel. And then centuries later, Jesus was born into one of those tribes. And as promised, he saved the whole world from sin. So God fulfilled his promise to Abraham. And in fact, God told Abraham that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars or as numerous as the, grain of sand, as the grains of sand. And we all know the song. We sing it in church, Father Abraham. Father Abraham had many sons, and we're one of those through the line. We're one of those sons that came from Abraham's line. And that's amazing to know that God provides and takes care of us. And when he promises something, he always takes, follows through with it. Well, why is it so important, though, to do things God's way? Why couldn't we just do it our own way? Well, it's important to do it God's ways because he knows the plans he has for us. But you may ask, aren't there faster ways to, to success? Well, sometimes yes. And in fact, the world will offer you many shortcuts to worldly goals like money and popularity and to fame. But the problem with those shortcuts is a lot of times they're going to cost you your reputation. And do you know what the reputation is? A reputation is what others think of you. And even though we know that we don't need to let other, what others think of us bother us, we need to be identified as, when we identify ourselves, let me rephrase that, when we identify ourselves as Christians and take on that reputation, then we need to live according to God's word. Because if we say that we're a Christian, but then we go and maybe make fun of that other student or maybe do something wrong because our friends are pressurized into it, then are we really truly living according to God? We're not. And that can tarnish or that can hurt our reputation as Christians. Well, we all have a choice to stay faithful and live a righteous life or to follow the path of the world. But make no mistake, the worldly path can lead to popularity and fame and money and power. Where is that going to lead you at the end of life? One day, we're going to all die, and we're going to be all we're going to all face Jesus, and He'll want to know: Were you faithful, or did you take your own path? But well, God has blessed each and every one of us with gifts, with talents, and with strengths that He wants us to use for Him. Some of us are good teachers. Some of us are good at musical instruments. 
some of us are good at drawing things, and some of us have gifts that we to call a gift of hospitality, which means that we like to take care of people, um, and we can empathize with people. But we need to use those gifts for God's glory. And as believers, God expects us to trust him and follow his path so that we will not only use those gifts for his glory, but in a way that pleases God, but live in a way that pleases God. Excuse me, I'm sorry. So don't follow the world. Don't do what the world is doing. Don't give up what you, how you think you should live to follow the world. Live a righteous life. Worldly gain is not worth the loss of reputation of your salvation. There's a lot of things out there. And you guys are going to face a lot of pressures in school with friends, with um, other classmates and, and those that are going to school. Those that aren't going to school, you're going to have other um, struggles as well um, in doing the e-learning. But know that God is in control and he's always going to take care of you. No matter what you face, all you need to do is just trust in the Lord. We talked about that, I think, last week or two weeks ago, maybe. Um, trust in the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. Lean not on your own understanding, and he will make your path straight. In fact, I think we talked about that when we talked about the wooer um, in our Back to School series. The, the road to follow God and follow Jesus isn't easy. Nobody said it was going to be easy, but it's a straight path. And we can trust that the Lord's going to help us through those obstacles. Well, Let's close with a word of prayer, and then we can um, we can review our our less our Bible verse, and then we'll let you guys go. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this lesson. I thank you for the things that you've given me to say, and I just pray that even though we had some technical difficulties at the beginning, I pray and hope that this is reaching those out there that were watching the video to begin with. Um, and Lord, I just pray that you will be Bless each and every one of those that are, are watching, um, or maybe that will watch this later. Um, be with them. Keep them safe. Keep them healthy. And Lord, help us to know to trust in you, to put on the full armor of God, because we're going to face attacks from the devil, especially as we try to follow you, because he doesn't want us to follow you. We know that you're in control, and we know that you have already won the victory. We just need to trust in you. Be with us this week. Keep us safe and keep us healthy. I pray. Amen. All right. Well, I want to, we had a verse last week, um, and I think I talked about it at the beginning of this. Maybe I didn't, um, but I want to review that verse. Um, so we're going to pull that up here. And it says, put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. And that's found in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. And that's the New Living Translation. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. We talked about the helmet of salvation last week. We talked about the breastplate of righteousness and the shield of faith this week. And we know that those are all parts of the armor of God. And we've got other pieces that we're going to talk about in the coming weeks as well. So I look forward to sharing that with you guys. Have a great afternoon, and we look forward to sharing next week. Bye, guys.